We're in Guatemala, we're focusing on the Motagua River. And it's a river which flows from Guatemala City towards the Caribbean coast. And what we found out is that there's actually one big plastic or debris source near Guatemala City. And then it flows down and we see it stuck on all the banks. And close to the source it's a lot of soft plastics and on the beaches we only find hard floating plastics. It's very important to identify the sources, where is the plastic from the ocean actually coming from. I think it's one of the main tasks. This is point number one, yeah, this is the start. So this is where, this is the source actually, the source of the trash. Today we're at the, the river Klang in Malaysia in the state of Selangor. It's one of the major rivers in Malaysia, uh, not only because it's uh, well, a fair amount of water, but also because it drains the large metropolis of uh, Kuala Lumpur, which means that unfortunately a lot of plastic waste that is mismanaged ends up through urban canals and other ways of transport into the river, and that makes it one of the most polluted rivers in the world. So the reason why we do this research is because we want to know how much plastic is transported through a river like the Klang. We want to know if there's any variation over time and space, if there's any response, for example, through rain events, and how it interacts, for example, the tide. So what we see here is, is a significant amount of debris on every sandbar. What we're doing here is we're measuring the fluxes of plastics in the, in the river and we're doing this by counting. So there's two students helping us now and they're literally counting the plastics and they're dividing the plastics which they see in, in different categories. PSD. That's what they're repeating uh, every half an hour and that's what they do for six hours. These measurements only give us information about the amount of plastic items per unit of time. So for example, the amount of plastic items per hour. But we also want to say something about the mass of plastic to expect. And for example, the ratio between plastic items or plastic mass and different debris that we find in the river. So for example, organic debris. And in order to estimate that, we also deploy small nets. It's a custom-made trawl in order to sample the debris that we find in the river. So let's try to do a little bit of active trawling today. We have to really maintain its stability today. Now, the sampled debris that we take from the river, uh, we analyze in turn, and we can say something about the ratio between organic and plastic mass, and we can say something about uh, the polymer type of the plastic that we find. Because that really says something about where the plastic comes from. We used our net for only 10 to 15 minutes and this is basically what you what you typically get so really a, a laundry basket full of waste of course there's a lot of organic material as well but there's so many plastics as you can see there's toys there is like little drinking bottles um, hard plastic rings very dangerous for fauna etc a lot of food wrappings especially these ones the the instant noodle packaging and especially if we do that for different rivers all over the world that helps us to identify the fundamental principles of plastic transport from land into the river and from the river into the ocean hey so we're now at the beach a very remote beach so what we're going to do here we're going to do measurements square meter measurements and we put this down on a on a pile of trash and then we define the amount of pieces per plastic type. See a lot of the foamy things, see? And they're pretty small, they're all degraded. And we also see a lot of the hearts, the peel hearts things, so the, the lids. And the foamy things, so degraded foams. This is the dirty part of the job. Only when you've been in these places, you really realize the, the problem. So I think when you're in the office and you see these pictures, you're not really aware of, of, you can't smell it and you can't see the size and you can't see the perspective. So how much it actually is and 
how, how dirty and how big the problem actually is. So only really if the whole scientific community, students and researchers from all over the world comes together and, and tries to tackle this problem jointly, we can really answer the fundamental questions that we need to answer to solve this challenge and to, to move forward and reduce plastic pollutions in every part of the aquatic environment.